Hey there, this is Kung Fu Physics. We're working our way presently through practice physics GRE problems. The one I have today is number 57 off of the 2001 physics GRE exam. The practice exam, it looks like this. I like this problem because there are two good ways to do it. And I'd say it's about, uh, it's about sixes. Six of one, half a dozen of uh, the other as far as time uh, doing it the two different ways. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do it. Uh, as usual, I glance at the answers when I start a problem like this. And in this case, it's actually very telling to look at the answers because there's quite a bit of differences in them. There's a factor, a constant or, or whatever, in one of the answers right off the bat in answer C that is not present in any other ones. It's got a H there, you notice. And uh, so right off the bat, you're seeing that there's some differences in the answers and you will be able to eliminate uh, some of these just looking at the units, the dimensions of the answers. So that's good. Uh, you should always feel optimistic about a problem when you notice something like that in the answers. On to it. A so quick glance at that diagram. Now I'm going to read the text of the problem, number 57. A stream of water of density rho, cross-sectional area A, and speed v strikes a wall that is perpendicular to the direction of the stream, as shown in the figure above. The water then flows sideways across the wall. The force exerted by the stream on the wall is. So we're looking for a force. And the first way to do this problem, uh, as is fairly popular in the uh, one of the sites that you can go to, uh, there's probably several of them that post uh, some, some answers to these practice uh, GRE problems, is to do a dimensional analysis. And so we'll do it that way first, and then uh, and then move on to actually getting the answer the other way. So, um, how do we? What, what do we notice about the units uh, of these? First of all, let's address answer C. Um, after reading the text of the problem, can answer C even be an answer? What is H? It's not written in the diagram. Uh, presumably, I mean, we use H as physicists for some type of height in so many other things, but I mean, it's just a ridiculous trick answer in this case. Uh, there is no height mentioned, um, and it, it doesn't say that this water is located at any type of height that would have anything to do with anything. So answer C is, is just a, a trick dummy answer, and it's you kick that one out right away. You're down to four answers, and I guess statistically, even if you can eliminate one, you want to be guessing. Um, you know the way the points, uh, they w the way they reward the points and take off uh, for wrong answers. Statistically, you'd want to be guessing, even if you can eliminate one answer. But in this case, you can actually do a lot better than that. Uh, looking at answer D and E, um, notice that the density is at the bottom. Now the density has, uh, in my head. Now I know a lot of people when they do dimensional analysis, they think something like this. Uh, I've seen this before. You would do a density uh, like this. Mass divided by length cubed. Uh, and I've seen people write dimensions like this. And, and I get it. That's a, I don't know why that uh, notation was chosen with the brackets or whatever. To me, that takes a long time to write. And maybe it's, maybe it's really sloppy. It is really sloppy. But because I'm so used to dealing with uh, international units, I see a density. Uh, when I think of the units, I think this kilograms per cubic meter. So that's kind of just what goes on in my head. I mean, I do appreciate the difference between these two, but for, for the you know sake of solving a problem, you do what, what works, right? And for me, uh, this is what a density is, kilograms per cubic meters. Now, if that density is on the bottom and blah, 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 there's other stuff up there. Uh, well, the kilograms part is on the bottom. This would pop up to the top, you know, but the kilograms is on the bottom. Is that gonna work for a force? Because what's a force? Well, a force is a mass times acceleration, and this is in kilograms. An acceleration, using standard units, would be meters per second squared. Kilograms has gotta be on the top, right? I mean, you should know that. You should know the units, and that should be very intuitive to you. Um, that the mass the units of mass have to be on the top. In answer C and uh, in answer D and E, you should, after that, should realize very readily that those cannot be the answers because those are not correct units of force. 
So now we've got three answers eliminated. We're really in good shape. It's between answer and B. Uh, if we were really pinched for time, like really pinched for time, we could just guess at that point and statistically realize we were going to make out better. Um, but you can even do better than that because notice that the units of A and B are different as well. You've got a V squared in one and a V in the other. So I would start with the, start the top with the top one and uh, I would write the simplified units. So I've got a density, kilograms, cubic meters, multiplied by a velocity squared, which is going to be meters squared, second squared, because I square that velocity, uh, multiplied by an area, which is meters squared. So I've got four uh, meters squared and three on the bottom, kilogram meters per second squared. That is what I'm looking for for a force. And so that's, that's by process of elimination, I would drop B there because B, it just has a, it, everything else is the same except that constant two as far as the units are concerned, except that V, v squared. Uh, I just have a V and B. So I, I'm talking a lot. Hopefully you saw that right off the bat when I did it. Um, and you, you wouldn't have to think that. You could solve that problem very quickly just doing what I did there with dimensional analysis, right? And you get to answer A just by looking at the units. So that's a great way to do the problem. And like I said, I think that's a fast way to do the problem. Uh, if you're anything like me, though, you really are curious as to how that comes out anyways. Even if you did do the problem uh, the way we just did it, you'd, you'd want to make sure you understood how answer A is the answer. And so I want to do it that way next. The way that uh, it popped into my head to do this problem is using an impulse. And the reason it did, because I looked at that and I saw, well, that, that stream of water has momentum before the collision. It's got a velocity. It's got a mass. That stream of water has momentum, and then it hits the wall, and it transfers that momentum to the wall via uh, an impulse. And, and the, the water then no longer has linear momentum because the water is no longer traveling to the right. It's stopped or, you know, is going one way or, or another. Um, it's lost all of its momentum during an impulse as it's transferred that. And so... That was what popped to my head is how to get the, the answer. An impulse is a force integrated over time. Okay, uh, And that is equal to the change in momentum. In this case, the change in momentum is whatever the momentum is before the water is striking the wall and then zero afterwards. So really, we only have to do one thing for it. Uh, the force as it turns out, we don't have to play anything fancy with this integral because the force is constant, right? The force is not changing. If we get this, this stream of water going there, uh, it's going to be a constant force working. So this just pops out to a multiplication, just the force multiplied by the time that the force is in effect. The, uh, the momentum, the initial momentum of the water is just going to be the mass of the water times its velocity. The mass is going to equal the density times the volume, that's a big B, V there, times the little v. Now the volume of the water is going to equal the area times the length of the water. And I'm being pedantic here. When I solved this problem, uh, don't get me wrong, I did not take all these steps. I saw where I was going in my own head and, and didn't make all these steps. I just want to make it clear for the purposes of the video, as clear as I can. Now, what is the length of that column of water over a given amount of time that we allow to pass? Well, it's just going to be the velocity of that water times the time. Can you see how that gives us the length of a given column of water? You know, if this thing is moving at three meters per second, for example, and we let it go for one second, we've got three meters of water. That's going, that's going to be the length of the column of water. So that's velocity times time times our other velocity from up there. Okay, and that equals our force times our time. So again, I've taken extra steps there, been a little pedantic so you can see where it's coming from. Um, as it turns out, this situation is dependent is independent, independent of time. Uh, it, these, the, you notice they cross out. It doesn't matter how much time we are uh, allowing this, this force to act 
um, the the force per unit area or whatnot I mean that's going to be what's important um, the I, I, I'm having trouble I'm reaching here for explaining exactly what I'm trying to say but um, the, the time doesn't matter the time doesn't matter the force is going to be a constant force at work there okay now depending on how much of that force is, is determining how big the impulse is that's being delivered and how much momentum is being transferred that is dependent on how much time uh, it takes but it, it that's all that's all and it pops out right there you get the density times the area times the velocity squared and that's answer A so answer A on uh, number 57 2001. That's uh, one way to get there. And I think that second way to do it, again, took me a little bit time of time to try and explain it, but I think you could do that just as quickly as doing the dimensional analysis also if you were real comfortable with impulse and, uh, and momentum problems. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching these videos, and I'll see you next time.